Hello, everyone. Good evening from Paris and Berlin. Good evening from Berlin. <laughs> Representing Europe over here, uh, but I know it's good morning for some of you in the US. Um, so thank you for tuning in. We will get started in a couple of minutes as we've got folks logging in as we're starting right on time. So in the meantime, you can go ahead and say hello in the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from today. It's always nice to see our global community represented. Let's see, who do we have today? I see a lot of people typing. Okay, Nikolai from London, hello. Hi, Rudolph. Jeff from Toronto. Julia from Munich, this is great, covering the whole map. Diane, hi. Bethlehem, Matthias. Barcelona, San Francisco, Berlin. This is awesome. Great, we've got a lot of Europeans working late tonight, joining us at 6 p.m., thank you. Hello, hello, New York, wonderful. Good afternoon. Hi, Pavla. All right, good crowd, already 100 people joining us, so we can definitely get started. Well, um, thank you for joining us again. For those of you who I haven't met virtually yet, I'm Dominique, I'm on the community team here at CFO Connect. And if you're new to CFO Connect, or maybe this is your first event, uh, we're glad you found us. We are a global community of finance leaders and have all sorts of ways to learn and connect with finance peers. So we host events like this one pretty frequently, a few times a month. We have a private Slack group for CFOs, uh, a one-on-one -on -one member matching program. We have a podcast that's all about finance leadership called CFO Yeah, um, and lots more. So if you'd like to participate in any or all of those things, we'd love to have you officially join the community. Um, you can apply to join at cfoconnect.eu. And the link is right there in the chat. All right, so if you didn't know, CFO Connect is a community created by Spendesk. If you're not familiar with Spendesk yet, it's an all-in-one spend management platform that finance teams love. And if you're on this webinar, I'm assuming you're a fan of tools that can help you cut down on tedious admin tasks, streamline your processes, free up time to do work that adds real value, uh, in which case you probably want to check out Spendesk if you haven't yet. So speaking of tools, that is what today is all about. Uh, finance tools are one of the top, uh, the most popular topics that we discuss here in our community. Um, so we decided to launch this new event series to help give you kind of a behind the scenes look at the different tech stacks that finance leaders are using and be able to ask questions, get advice, um, and really dig in and hopefully discover some great new tools. So we are thrilled to have uh, Gary join us today to kick off this Tools Talk series. Uh, Gary spent many years as a finance leader in fast-growing companies, most recently as a CFO of Calibri Games, and he is a big advocate for automation, digitalization, um, so he's a great person to kick off our Tools Talk series. In fact, he's so passionate about this topic that He's recently created his own tool called Contract Hero, which I'll talk a little bit about today. Um, it's a contract management, management solution for SMEs, um, which he designed to solve some of the pain points uh, he experienced as a CFO. So Gary, thank you so much for being with us today. Super excited to dive into the tool stack you've used as a CFO, but first uh, let's have you just go ahead and introduce yourself and talk a little bit more about your background. Yeah, first of all, welcome <clears throat> welcome to the talk and thanks a lot to the audience for participating today. Um, just a couple of words about me. So my name is Gary. I, my background is in finance, operations, legal and nearby topics. So I spent more than half a decade of my career in finance organizations, most of them fast growing um, with high hyper growth teams in different industries ranging from software as a service to platform to gaming. And from the get-go of my career, I was always looking for automation, tools that can help make the life of a finance of a finance person easier. And most recently, beginning of this year, 
and together with my co-founder, I founded Contract Hero, and Contract Hero was born out of a lot of pain points I experienced during my career. So I went through two M&A processes on the sales side. So you always have to get together the documents, the files, everything you need in order to properly prepare this. And this always has been a pain point. And anecdotally, in my first one of my first jobs, I was looking for something like Contract Hero, a contract management tool that is easy to use, that doesn't look like a banking terminal from the 1980s, is easy to use, and has all the all the tools and all the functionality I'm actually looking for. And I used to redo this over the couple of years, but we couldn't find something like this. And we saw that there's explicitly a necessity for a tool like this. And we came up with Contract Hero. So we help users out there, specific um, finance and legal people, for example, to organize all their contracts, which have been before cluttered over the organization in one simple tool where you have an overview about all your termination dates your end dates, your starting dates, and you have everything well structured in a in a good overview in an app that's accessible from pretty much everywhere. Yeah, <clears throat> and this is what we're building at the moment, which has been born out of the necessity because nothing like this has existed before. Yeah. Wonderful, great. Well, we are gonna get into that and all of the tools that you've used in your finance career. Uh, most recently. So without further ado, here is the meat of the presentation. Um, and this is really for all of you. You know, we've got over 100 people logged in tonight that want to uh, really dive deep into this topic of tools. So as Gary is talking through this tech stack, um, we'd love to see your questions um, come through on what specifically you'd like to know about each of these tools. He'll obviously talk through uh, how he uses them, why he uses them, his criteria for selecting them. Um, but we want to really address all the specific questions you have. So don't hesitate to put those in the questions tab and we'll get to them as soon as possible. Um, so with that, Gary, I'll let you kind of walk us through this. Sure. So um, one, I'm a big advocate of, um, say, user, experience, um, user acceptance in companies. So um, I made very good experience with talking to other stakeholders, not just finance, and find out what the pain point is. So, and we're gonna go through this overview um, from the left to the right, or basically from the lane of an arrival of a document. So for example, in most organizations, you still get physical mail. That's still a thing. Um, but physical mail means you have to open the letter, you have to go to the scanner, you have to scan this in, and you have to get this to a system. This is a tedious and repetitive task. And what we integrated, for example, for this is mail digitization. So you send everything to a fully automated mailbox, and then you get a notification once this is scanned and OCR readable, so that you can erase this tedious task of, I open a letter, I take this letter, I scan it, and I archive it physically, which there are better ways to do this in the 21st century. So, and this is why we integrated, for example, Kaya, um, which we now collaborate together with as well um, over here at Contract Hero because we are serving the same thing, which is getting getting rid of paperwork. And the other things are basically setting up setting up the ground for automation. So I'm a big advocate of centralization and sharing information. So on the bottom right hand side, you see a password manager. Why does a password manager matter? At closing date, and if for example you work in a company that is venture backed, you have investor reporting, with strict deadlines. So you take all the receipts, you have to find the receipts, and then you can encounter a typical situation, you have to accept the portal, download an invoice, or get to this point, but you don't have the credentials. So, and nowadays, you write someone, some person like on the internal chat tool, say Teams or Slack, um, but if you have a password manager and you can share this across the organization, you get rid of this additional task as well. Same goes for shared inboxes. So set up an inbox, which is invoice at your company name, for example, or create groups. In that way, you can always include finance people in the process and the other people and the other teams can basically focus on what matters more to them, which is working on product, getting, getting ahead in marketing, working on content pieces, for example. And this way, finance can do a better job product marketing and all the other departments can focus more <clears throat> more on the job same goes for vendor portals if you combine shared mailboxes 
a password manager which gives you the credential and an overview of all vendor portals, you can pretty much automate this. And the same goes for billing emails and auto, for, auto forwarding. If you establish a culture of, okay, I got something which looks like a receipt, let's forward this to this inbox. It's a matter of two seconds, but it makes the life of a finance professional way more easy because this way you prevent a lot of discussions, a lot of conversations that you will have with other teams and you can focus on what matters. Because if you erase this tedious manual task, you can basically focus on building value. So this works with billing emails. So set up an email address, which is centralized, which the finance team has access to and establish this as a common practice across your organization. Work with auto forwarding. If you have a specific, if you have a specific reference within an email, for example, your invoice for, forward this to this billing email. This is easy to set up and it will save you countless hours of searching for that specific invoice, asking around in your organization. You can use for this example, um, a tool called Get My Invoices. So anecdotally, just one, some examples. LinkedIn, LinkedIn ads are always, the invoice for this is always difficult to get. If you set up something like say, Get My Invoices, you save the credentials there and Get My Invoices is automatically extract, extracting this. Same goes for example, Amazon Marketplace. There are various vendor portals, for example, in Germany, if you buy electronics, you're looking for that specific computer, but you only get it in a vendor portal, which only, for example, the procurement team has access to. You can save the credentials there. This tool is automatically extracting this invoice for you and then can forward this to your receipt management system. For example, you can use to manage your receipts and your invoice, you can either use vendors for this or you can use, for example, Candice for this. <clears throat> Um, so this way you get, you get, you can establish a flow, a flow of basically how a document and an invoice gets the right way, the fastest, the most efficient and without human error way towards, um, towards the finance organization, because that is basically the pillar you have to, in order to make meaning of data, in order to provide valuable insights to other stakeholders, which is the ultimate goal of what we are working towards to. You have to set the groundwork, which is basically getting everything in a centralized place without having too much conversations about this. So setting up central inboxes, physical mailbox, <clears throat> which can then get digitized down the road to Kaya, for example. And the other way is if you get, say, after a financing round or some important legal documents, say you close the new, uh, your, you have a new office, for example, you have some important le leasing agreements because he's trying to save costs, for example, on equipment, and you have to store this somewhere. In an old world, for example, before Country Fury existed, you throw it somewhere either in the mailbox, in your personal mailbox, or somewhere at Google Drive, Dropbox, or whatever cloud solution you prefer. You can auto forward this as well, for example, to contact your contracts in a central place. All your physical mail is sitting in Kaya, and then you can forward this to your accounting system. So. Um, for those folk, folks uh, dialing in from not Germany, Dativ is like the central solution for Germany, which is still kind of the guardian for the accounting. And so in this way, you can basically automate towards the, the flow of invoices towards this tool. And where Spendness comes in here is you have a lot of spending, specifically in the, say, SaaS space, in the ad space, and so forth. So before something like this existed, say, hey, can you can I borrow your credit card? I have to sign up for X, Y, Z service. And this can be a ton of services. For example, Calendly, Unbounce, there are tons of different services what you sign up for. In the old world, you get a credit card statement, and then you go for <clears throat> the treasure hunt, namely looking for the receipts. With Spendless, for example, you can set up a specific card for a specific service. And in this way, you have a full control and you can delegate responsibilities, for example, to team leads from other teams and can set this up there. Um, then on the right-hand side, um, so travel perk or Contravo can be used for travel booking. So for example, if you visit a lot of trade fairs, you have a sales team that is visiting a lot of clients or is planning to do it again <laughs> once it's possible again. Um, you can use travel perk for this because you have then one platform um, which is easy to use, which is easy to use from a, from a user perspective and from a finance perspective as well, because it's fully integrated with our tools as well. 
So these tools can speak with each other. So trouble perk, you get one proper invoices. So you get one proper invoice, which is important instead of shaving this. So, so just anecdotally, before we had travel perk, we used a lot of different booking portals as such, booking.com or kayak.com. Um, and what we did is, and this is just one example for user acceptance, as what I made good experience with is always talk to your users in your organization. So what we did in, in one of my past companies, we talked with the person in charge, booking travel flights, for example, flying in um, candidates that we want, that we want that they join our organization. Ask this person how the flow is. Ask this person what what he or she is looking for in a specific tool. And we did a trial round. We said, please use this tool. Let us know what you think. How's the flow? How does it differ to the tools you have been using before? And ask and exchange constantly feedback. And even accept that people say, I want a different tool. So in this tool, what we did is, so the concern of this person was, hey, but I'm concerned that, for example, travel perk or Contravo is more expensive when the, when the travel bookings I'm using. Even though technically from a finance perspective, and this is why I'm a high advocate of user acceptance and empathy for the other role, we said, yeah, even if we save 10 euros here, we use this on the other hand because we cannot deduct taxes from this. But again, this is a finance problem. This is not a problem of the user at the end of the day. But for every single tool here, what you need is collaboration from your colleagues. And if you come into a mood where you, where you come along with a tool and you talk to your, for example, you head up engineering to your CTO and said, hey, can you please add the credentials to the password manager? You always have to give the outlook of a good experience. Meaning if you add your credit card or your credentials, for example, for Azure, AWS, or whatever cloud service you're using, to this password manager, we have less contact points talking about invoices, invoice collections, cost control, because I can do this on my own. And what the other person's reception then is, hey, that's cool. So then we can do more productive things in the meanwhile. So you save time, you save potential, potential discussions on this road, and the same, we did the same, the same thing with Travel Perk. For example, we said, okay, we compare the prices, even though at the end of the day, if you do the math, it doesn't matter if it's more expensive. Disclaimer, it isn't. Um, just talk to the other affected people of this tool. Same goes for, <clears throat> and then tr try to find out at what stage you are with your company. This is important. Um, figuring out, okay, what is the biggest pain point? So for example, if you, if you want to automate or digitize your organization, take half a day. Talk to, talk to either your team, to your colleagues, and to the other teams. And make a list. So and I made good, very good experiences with this, doing just a simple pain point list. You can do this, for example, with Google Sheets. Ask the people what next and the most. Ask them what are frequent questions they get, for example, from the management team, from the finance team. What do they struggle with? And then figure out, okay, how can I help and how can I be of service as a finance team to these people? So, and then you will get a lot of statements and then you can cluster the statements and then you can look, for example, at this tool stack, which is just a sample one and say, hmm, how, which of these tools can help me solve this problem? Because every, every organization is different. Every organization has different requirements, but at the end of the day, it's about solving a problem for a user. And our users are our colleagues, which we have better topics to, to talk about rather than saying, hey, can you please send me this invoice? Where do I find these credentials? And this, this is a smart way working around this and not just fighting against the symptoms rather than the root cause itself. This is a great approach to solving pain points across the entire organization. I really like that. Um, well, I think we've got a good overview to start with, and we've already got some great questions. So let's go ahead and drill down a little bit. I'm just going to go by the most upvoted questions. So Aravind is asking, how do you manage receivables, collections, and measure cash inflow? Um, probably for every for every problem, there's good. There's a good solution. So when you say receivables and receivables and cash flow, so as I'm, I'm from Berlin, there's one company doing this 
which can help you with this, which is called Educap. What they are doing is they're plugging into your bank and they're plugging into your bank and then you can connect to this and then you can build on the fly a cash flow analysis for this. Um, the automation of receivables at the end of the day, to be fully honest, I don't have a solution for this because I work in industries um, where we have been B2C customer, B2C focus, um, but there are digitalized collections agency in Berlin who can probably help you with this. But this is pretty much depends on the depends on the um, the geo you're coming from. So in short, cash for managing cash and for managing doing cash flow, um, the tool of choice that you can talk to is Agicap. It's a French company that has a presence in Germany as well. So it's spelled A G I C A P, um, which can help you with cash flow and managing this. Great, thanks for that, Gary. Um, moving on to Michael's question, how do you go ahead with approving invoices and making payments then? Which system do you use for this? <clears throat> um, yeah, so in my previous companies, what we used um, used to do, we had, um, we had two lanes for this. One is basically the invoice-based and the other one was the cash-based, or basically the payment. The invoice has we did with a sub-tool sub of Canvas, which is called Workflows. So what you do is you basically upload either the offer of the specific document or the invoice itself, and then you can build conditions. So just to just to give one example, say you have three levels. You have the, the managing director or say the CEO, then you have the team lead or the head of, and then you have, <clears throat> for example, the member of the team. So let's make an example of a marketing team and they want to buy a new tool. And you say, okay, the, the approval threshold is everything above, say, a thousand euros a year. I need the approval from the managing director. Everything below can be managed, can be managed by the team lead. And everything below, say, 200 euros a year can be done by the respective member. So we used for this explicitly, it's called Candice Workflows, which is a sub thing. This you can do for paper based invoices. The other thing that you can do is VS Bendness. So the easiest one, for example, I managed an office management team back then. And if they had to buy something, I just get a push notification. They can pay this with credit card and I just look at what they wrote. Said, okay, approve, fine. And they then they can use the credit card to do that. Perfect. Okay. Hopefully that helps uh, answer your question, Michael. Um, and yes, through planning this tools talk, we actually were able to uncover that uh, Spend Us could, uh, in theory, replace the need for Candace as we have an invoice processing uh, tool as well, where you can set approvals and limits and certain conditions. So I know there's a couple of folks who asked about using Candace and Spend Us together. Um, so hopefully that helps clarify. Uh, let's see. Next. <clears throat> Maurice is asking, uh, how many of these applications are GDPR compliant? And I would assume all of them as you're in Germany, but go yeah. ahead. So, um, yeah, my previous company, so I worked in a, in a privacy company. Um, so we had a lot of user data and we have always been since the 20th of May 2018, which was the effective introduction of GDPR. All of these tools are GDPR compliant. So data is, Candice is, get my invoices, travel perk and all of them are compliant. So is Contact Hero. We are sitting in Germany. We have German servers and our privacy, <clears throat> our privacy policy and all that comes with it is up to date. So all okay. of them are. Great. Yes, we are very GDPR aware here in Europe. Um, all right. Jana uh, asked about using Canvas and Spendesk. Are they not doing more or less the same? I've chimed in on that, but uh, Gary, you can perhaps share your perspective on the use cases. Uh, a bit more specific. So which is the use cases for what? For using both Candice and Spendesk. So yeah, we started using Can uh, Spendesk, I think, um, I think about two years ago. So you guys have a pace of developing and listening to users. And I'm happy to be part of that feedback loop as well. So back then we, um, we integrated Candice. We integrated Candice and used Candice for everything that has an invoice. So it's basically either paper-based 
or it has a normal invoice flow, which is not paid by credit card, to put it more simple. And then we routed everything of these payments that you pay via wire transfer, most likely, or direct debit, we wired this through Candace. And then within the organization, within the first step, um, we try to get rid of chaos, which I call uncontrolled credit card distribution. And for in order to solve this problem, we took um, we took out all the legacy credit cards and replaced this flow with spenders. So we managed, for example, all the software subscriptions with um, with spenders. All the other invoices uh, we routed we routed through Candace respectively and Candace workflows, which is now in one part. So to get an approval lane for everything paper based, um, scan this and everything that is um, based on a credit card and needs um, monitoring on a credit card payment level, which is most of the tools that I'm aware of that people or companies are using. This is what you use spenders for. This is a use case that you that I worked with in the past, but nowadays, as far as I'm aware, you can do both of this now with spenders as well. <clears throat> That's right, and that's good news as it's always nice to be able to re remove one tool <laughs> from your tool stack that was serving a very specific purpose. Um, great, so let's see what other questions we have coming in here. Jonathan, yes, we'll put together a sort of recap of each of these tools, the issues they solve, and the criteria um, for choosing them. So that's a great idea, thanks for that. We will share it with everyone who's attended. Um, let's see. Oh, got to keep up here. Surreal is asking, do you use a third-party tool to invoice customers like Chargebee or something similar? Um, I used in a, I used to work with in the past with a German tool which is called Billomart because um, the good thing is if you work together with tech, which I'm a big fan of. So if you try to solve a problem, talk to your data engineers in your company, talk to the tech team, get them out once it's possible again, or call them on Zoom now get a coffee with them and try to figure out a technical solution for your for your problem as well. Um, so in that case, so we used in the past Billomart, which is a German company, <clears throat> because German German invoices are a bit specific on that, um, which we feed it with, um, with information from our APIs. So to give an example, so it's a SaaS company, what is the pricing plan? Is there a discount involved? And then you can push this to Billomart and then can run your invoices through Billomart. Subscription management specifically, so customer, for example, canceling and renewing the subscription, this has been automatically managed by the system and has been sent to Billomart. They have a very powerful API for this. Okay, and what? How? what's the spelling of that tool, Gary? Uh, it's B-I-L-L-O-M-A-T. Billomart, okay. Yeah. There you go, so if you're in Germany, check out Billomart. Um, great, let's see. We've got a question from Will asking, how much do you use Excel? Um, every day, <laughs> it's a short answer. Um, Excel, is, Excel is still a great tool. Um, so to give one example, how you can make the most, how you can make the most of say Excel and one tool that I haven't explicitly mentioned here, which is Looker. So um, how can we Excel in a triangular of your accounting data data visualization and <clears throat> Excel, how can this be useful? So Excel still, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this tool. Some people have mixed opinion about this, but um, with Excel, you can do further analysis. To give one example, um, if you have one single source of truth of data and you manage to transform your data, which is sitting in Dativ, which is, has a specific date format, you work together with your data people, to transform this and move this to your data warehouse. And then you can visualize this within Looker, and then you can point and click. Looker is actually very user-friendly in that regard. And you can build customized report with your cost data, for example, from accounting, and um, marketing-specific data. So for example, <clears throat> cost per lead, uh, average revenue per user, everything that you can think of and that applies to your business model. Download this, put this into Excel, and do a further analysis. So. Excel is still helpful and still the workhorse of most organizations. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I assumed that would be the answer. It seems no one is ever to able, able to really quit Excel. Um, let's see. So Alexander is asking, could you please elaborate on the benefit? Oh, sorry, we already got to that one. Never mind, that was a duplicate. 
Um, how do you get your physical mail to Kaya? Is there one central person scanning all physical invoices and uploading them? That question's from Michael. So how Kaya works is, <clears throat> say you have a mail, you have, you have your office location, and what you do in, in Germany, you just file a document, which is a mail forwarding service, um, and then you basically tell the German mail, hey, every single letter that I get, forward this to this post box, and there it gets scanned, and within one day, it gets scanned, OCR readable, and you get this in, get this in an online portal. And then from there, you can forward this. So you say, OK, you get, say, 10 letters, free are invoices. You can forward this to either Spendness or Canvas, depending on what you're using. Or you can say, oh, that's a contract. That's, for example, a purchase contract for whatever. Forward this to Contract Hero with just one click. <clears throat> or there's something that you just want to be in that tool. So works with mail forwarding and they scan this in German, data, in German scanning centers. OK, great. Uh, thanks for that answer. Let's see. Um, question from, let's see. I'm trying to see which ones are the most popular here. Matthias asks, um, do you know of a good tool that you can feed with the transactions of different bank accounts, then reconcile the transactions and turnovers to put them into an individual chart of accounts? Um, I know of, um, disclaimer, I never worked with this tool, but some who does something like this, so basically feeding. Um, so you mean, if you can elaborate a bit more on this, so you mean uploading all your bank, um, all your bank transactions into one tool and reconcile them with your, with your revenues, basically? That well, it sounds asking. like it sounds like what he's asking. Okay. Um, we used to solve something like this with uh, the power of Python programming and scripts. So, if there is a good tool, let me know. I don't have one. <laughs> Great. Well, we're all going to learn something here today. Um, all right, let's see what other questions we have. Justin says, what's your opinion on using chatbots and robotic robotic process automation within finance? And what are the top use cases you see for this kind of technology? Um, I, so far, I always try to work with API, RPA, but I never had the chance to work with it. Um, so. Chatbots, I'm a, I'm a big fan of implementing um, chatbots and automatically responses for this. So what we did in the first step is um, kudos to one of my former team members who, who coined a term and made a helping page, which is how to be nice to your accountant, which is just a helping page. And the next step would be um, translating the FAQs um, of every single question that a finance professional gets from colleagues into this thing. So for example, chatbots to answer, how do I fill out this form? How does this work? Um, so to give one example, if you, I would use a chatbot to answer questions about how to fill out an expense form, for example, or how does, can you please help me, for example, read my, read my payslip? So take common questions and so that people just type in the keyword and this way you can minimize this. The first step, the first step for this is just um, establish help pages. And you use um, you can use Confluence for this or whatever documentation software you use. And RPA would love to use this, would love to love to look more into this, but haven't had the chance yet. But this is on the rise, this topic. It's definitely a hot topic. We we might have to do an event uh, completely around that actually. Um, okay. So uh, Sarah has a great question. What software are you using for payroll? Um, payroll. <clears throat> so we used to work in the past with um, with Personio, which is a full stack full stack HR management software, uh, which provides such a service, and it worked uh, worked pretty well. Um, but this starts with basically. The automation or basically the efficiency of your payroll is highly dependent on with what tax advisor, for example, you're working with. And this can be a breeze and happen in 10 minutes, or this can be incredibly painful and take days, even though it's the same thing. So there it's about the tool would be for that use case, Personio, 
Or another one that I never worked with, but I heard good things about is um, especially PayFit. So Personio, if you don't know this, P is like person and IO at the end, and PayFit, they help you automate this. <clears throat> Great, and we are using both of those at Spendesk actually. Personio for kind of HR, uh, time off tracking documents and PayFit for actual payroll. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, oh, I like this question from Octave uh, asking, what's your total annual budget for this accounting and invoice stack or finance stack in general? Um, I love this question um, for the simple reason um, I had countless conversations with founders in the past about the cost of your, of your tool. And what I prefer to do is, so the annual budget, um, if you have everything of this in place, this can come to the five digits. But the more important question here is, um, if you ever come into a budget decision, I never answer the cost question directly. I always build a case, so meaning, if one of my team members or myself is busy with four hours of highly repetitive work, which I'm spending no value on, um, change the topic in that case. So if the annual budget for this would be, um, say, contact euro, for example, is um, is around in the teams in the teams tier is around 700 euros. Spendest pretty much depends on what tier you are in. Um, they think there are better points of contact for this. Um, Candice is around. 300, 400, give or take a month. Um, get more invoices is reasonably cheap. So don't name don't name me on exact prices. You can still negotiate discounts with these people. Um, it's around 60 euros. Uh, data is mostly covered by your tax advisor. Uh, Looker has very is almost an enterprise tool, and Kaya starts at I think 220 to 30 euros a month. Um, so all in all, if you implement all of them, but then you are the situation where you have around say 120 people, a lot of different stakeholders, then you're looking at five figures at um, annual. So around plus, more than 10,000 euros a year. But okay. again, it's about, um, it's about how much time you can save basically with this and what better use you have for your time. Absolutely, time is money. All right, Jeff says, uh, do you have a recommendation for a tool for forecasting? Um, we still did this um, in the past, we still did this for Excel. If there is a tool, I don't know of one. I looked at this topic as well, it's an interesting topic. Um, but the best thing to do for this is still using an Excel. Reason for that is, I think building, getting a good tool there is difficult because every single business is different. Even though you have two, say, comparable software as a service businesses, you have a lot of different things to factor in. And then depending on what you're looking for in this forecast. So we even use Excel and the big corporations I worked with, they still use Excel as well. Okay. And uh, Jeff, if you're in our Slack group, we do have a tools channel where I know this topic has come up before. So it can certainly get some input there too. Um, all right, we are making good progress on these questions. Thank you all for asking them. Um, I think Claudia's was around the same, along the same lines. Which tool are you using for monthly financial reporting? Excel again. Um, yeah, we used uh, we used Excel for this as well for monthly financial reporting. And um, so, if you come to slides, this is a very outdated tool and very niche tool which is called ThingCell. With this, you can build easily charts, um, which is just a plugin for Excel and for um, for Excel and for PowerPoint. By the end of the day, it was still Excel and PowerPoint, except if you have internal stakeholders. What we did is uh, we, both, we rebuilt the slides as Looker dashboards and uh, we decentralized the monthly reporting. We said, the report is going to be updated on the 5th for the, for the past month. Look at this. If you have questions, just write on some Slack. OK. But this is more for an internal use. And you can even share, say, an access with a person. And external depends on, depends on how strict your rules are on this. OK, makes sense. Um, all right, let me see which ones we didn't get to here. Um, Tobias asks, 
What are you using for subscription management, i.e. customer upgrading, downgrading, uh, et cetera? So more on the customer subscription side. Um, in, the previous, in, a, in the previous companies, we had self-developed solutions for this. So we solved this, everything we coded and developed this in-house. Um, I heard good things about Chargebee, but I'm not I'm not 100% certain on this topic. So um, would suggest um, would suggest to forward this question to the CFO Connect uh, Slack channel as well. But I heard good things about Chargebee. Yep, that's definitely come up in our Slack quite a few times too. Um, all right, let's see here. I think we've gotten to everything. Forecasting and scenario planning was another question from Sarah, but we answered that. Um, great. So Christian asks if you use a CPM software in controlling. Um, what can you can you spell out what you mean with CPM? So corporate performance management software can kind of to track the performance across the business. Uh, no. We haven't used something like this. Okay. All right. Um, Michael asks, how do you manage your billing process and reconcile with the bank, including how to connect with the backend info about customer and billing information? Um, we solved this. We solved this over scripts, and um, so what we did is um, we exported all our accounting data. Um, ran this via a script, which was developed in Python, then uploaded to um, to Looker, and then we take the the, <clears throat> the data. So this was the accounting data, and then we take the customer the, the customer data and the banking data. We do the same, and then we do and we did a matching process within the system. And basically, the output of the script was everything that you could not match, which is which is around say two percent, and then based on this, the rest we did manually. So short answer is scripts, your accounting data, and your bank data. OK, perfect. Um, all right, so we've got um, a few more here. So Tyler asks, how do you manage a shared inbox? A specific example is the email address listed on our invoices. We get a combination of purchase orders, wire advice, requests for quotes, etc., into a Google group email box, and it's a classic diffusion of responsibility. Any tips out there? Maybe something like Zendesk, or how has that worked for you? Um, so we did um, so differentiation. So a Google. So what we do is either a Google group. You can do this and just set up one person res responsible for this. This is one example, or you set up a dedicated email address. So there are pros and cons for both solutions. Um, the, the the pro for say a dedicated email address is. You just establish one um, filter logic. So you say everything that contains this word, for example, say delivery confirmation, which is just an email telling you the good is on the way. <clears throat> so this is a label. Then you have a label for invoice. This is where you filter everything like this. But at the end of the day, you just um, at a certain size, it's better to have a specific dedicated email address for this and not a group. In the early stage, it's better to have a group to have a fallback solution and to have one dedicated person being in charge for this. <clears throat> okay, great. Um, perfect. So we've got time for one more question. And just to remind you all, we will follow up with a breakdown of each of these tools, discussing the pros and cons, use cases, et cetera. Um, and if you're not part of our CFO Slack group, it is reserved for executive level uh, finance leaders. So you can apply to join that um, particular group just emailing us at hello at cfoconnect.eu. Um, there was one last question I'm trying to find here about tools that perhaps didn't work well for you. Uh, let me find it here. Jeremy asks, are there any tools that didn't work well or any workflows you haven't found a good uh, fit for you? Oh, it's uh, an interesting question. Um, <clears throat> so, so one one thing is specifically so why we found a contract here is 
contract management software. So I did a review of say 25 tools and at the end of the day, we made a lot of compromises. This and at the end of the day, founded a company to solve this to solve this problem because it existed um, because there was no proper solution at different. So what I'm a big fan of is making a rigorous list at the very beginning before starting your search. So we did a very strong procurement process and um, removed removed all basically all the bad tools. So um, um, any there are some tools. There are some tools which I haven't which haven't worked out well. So I don't want to publicly bash any company here. So um, make yourself a list before you start searching and always come back to this list later and hold yourself accountable to this list. I made very good experiences to this to basically not telling myself something different. So if you say that's my those are my requirements, I'm going to save this, I'm going to send this to people to hold me accountable for this, and then you can always come cycle back later to this. Perfect. Um, but test the tools um, that you're using, make a demo and ask yourself it's if if you're making compromises on this tool, if these compromises make sense. And one thing that is always important is um, see how fast the people react. See if you talk to professionals that understand your problem and see how fast the customer support basically is reacting to your question. There's nothing worse than just getting a bot message and then 48 hours of not an answer. That is a great point. Well, uh, thank you so much, Gary, for walking us through this. 45 minutes went by very fast. Um, we had definitely a lot of great questions. Hopefully you all had some takeaways from this. Um, would love to hear your feedback. So you can always email us or just respond to the follow-up that you'll get. Um, as this is a new series, uh, it's all about highlighting finance leaders in the community and having you share your tool stack. So if you would like to lead a future fools, uh, tools talk, We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so keep that in mind. And um, thanks again for your participation. And Gary, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, just uh, just a couple of words from my, from my end as well. Thanks, thanks a lot for being here. And we prepared for this community because as a disclaimer, I've been part of this community for more than I think almost three years now. Um, and I'm happy to be part of this. I learned a lot. And as a token of appreciation, we want to give back to the community. And this is why we prepared a perk specifically for CFO Connect. So you can find me on Slack and we prepared an offer, which is um, a good specific offer for just CFO Connect, which is contracture.de slash CFO Connect, where you can find a tailored offer just for you. Um, so we're offering you your solution for your contract management tool. Um, at a discounted price. If you have questions about Contact Hero tools, best practices, or just want to uh, just want to say hello, uh, just write me on CFO Connect Slack. You can find me on LinkedIn, and I'm always happy to help up for a chat and helping you fix your contract management. That is wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and share that link in the chat um, for anyone who wants to check that out and add some more automation uh, to their tool stack. So thanks also for that special offer, Gary. And uh, we will follow up with a recap on all of these tools. So look forward to your feedback. And thanks again for joining us, everyone. Have a great thanks evening a or day. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.